It's time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show live on WBON TV and on radio at WEKY, WKXO, and WIRV. Support your favorite team with apparel from Campus Warehouse and join us here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Also brought to you by Bishop Small Engine Repair and Nuevo Vallarta. And now let's go live to your host, Michael Watkins and Samantha Burford. Good evening, everyone, and welcome in to the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. I'm Samantha Burford and Michael Watkins here with you on a Monday night. Samantha, we're moving. We're a week away from Valentine's Day. And if you haven't got your Valentine's Day gift yet for John, I feel sorry for him because it's, it's time. You got Your Amazon orders are going to be cutting it close <laughs> if you put them in now. So, Well, do you have yours? I'm ready to go. Oh, yeah. I'm, You've already got I, I take my Valentine's Day very seriously. See, I, I kept waiting because every year, how many years have we been doing the show? You always say, Samantha, have you got me a Valentine's gift? gift and i'm always like, oh no. that, i thought that was a given it's like my birthday okay i need to have, I gotta have two a birthday different gift times someone's got someone a gift on this show it has been me giving you a gift i have not okay. received all right well we're going to give Waiting. the fans at home tonight Waiting. some a special interview with the madison central bowling team champions of the eighth and region that and is a true gift yeah. because how excited are we for them and they are They've got a big week coming up starting Wednesday. So so let's bring Coach on. Coach, we'll have you grab the mic there, and we'll chat a little bit. Let's let's first talk about this team and, and, and how good of a year you all had. You were the two seed going into the regional tournament. So just talk about the regular season and, and just kind of let the folks know because, listen, we, you know, we do talk a lot about basketball and football. We'll get into baseball here soon. But what we've tried to do here recently is talk more about volleyball and golf and now bowling wrestling things like that we're trying Cheer to give them the coverage yeah. archery, yes. so so tell the folks just kind of talk about how the bowling season goes here at madison central uh so this is my third year as uh central's coach um and this year has been by far the uh, largest team that i've had uh we ended up having 33 kids come out total um and so we participated in the boys region tournament and um, actually, Southern put us out of that uh, okay. tournament, yes. Uh, and I do have to thank Doug Martin a lot from Southern. Uh, he's their bowling coach down there. Uh, and he's done a great job and helped me, you know, sort of create this program and the atmosphere that we have at Central with bowling. Um, but this is Morgan Sparks, and then this is Tyler Scarberry. Um, and the Morgan has went to state, so in 2019 we were able to go to state and finish third that year. Um, and we were runner-up in eighth region, and then this year we were actually able to win region uh, by two total pinfalls with, uh, against West Jessamine. So... That's pretty impressive. And, and it is, especially t- when you go in as a the underdog is the two seed. Yeah. So, so talk about that and, you know, kind of how that underdog status, if that maybe helped you all, propelled you to the victory. Well, luckily we were able to get a first round bye because the first four, top four seeds got gets a bye. So we were able to relax that first round, you know, and see other teams knock it. Actually, I had two more teams in it and two of Central's teams played each other. Oh, and wow. had to put the one out. So okay. that's unfortunate with that, but, yes. you know, that's part of it. Um, but we were able to sort of see what we were up against and all of that. And, um, you know, Morgan and Tyler had some time to warm up. And, um, you know, they sort of – their backs weren't against the wall, I should say. Um, so it uh, – and Morgan does well under pressure, you know, and we'll talk about that here in a couple of minutes. I'll let her explain that to you. So. Well, go ahead. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> so, I, you know, you said this has been your third year. So, obviously, the sport is growing. Yeah. You've got bigger numbers coming in with 33 students. Tell us about how it started and how Morgan especially getting, I'm sure, her winning and getting more accomplished. And, and getting exposure. more Yeah. Yeah, and I think that we could have been state-bound last year as well, but, you know, COVID has sort of shut everything down. You know how it was with everything. Um, so it took a toll on the bowling sport as well. But um, I think my first year we had – maybe eight kids come out total, um, you know, and then the more I'm at the school, you know, getting to see the students. And then, of course, uh, Tyler, he sent out, he told me this yesterday, he sent out a private message on his Snapchat story. Okay. Um, and I made announcements and stuff. So, yeah. you know, he's I'm recruiting. Gonna, he's recruiting, which I am totally <laughs> fine with. So It's fun. Um, come it is fun. with us. It's very fun. And, uh, you know, I take care of them. You know, we'll go out to eat and all that stuff. If I'm involved, we're going to eat good. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I took them out oh, to, we're a, in then, to right? a steak we're dinner. In. Yeah. Um, you know, 
know, we won regions, and I took them to um, a steak dinner, like I said, uh, over in Danville. So I think okay. they really enjoyed that. I try to put the players first, you know, or the bowlers first, I should say. Well, let's let's talk to the bowlers. Let's start with Morgan. We'll go ladies first. And and Morgan, you know, you obviously you've got a little bit more experience here. You competed in this state tournament before, so talk about your first experience down there. Um, my first experience, I went with my cousin to state, and I think it was great for both of us, considering. He was a senior, and I'm glad that I went, well, got to go with him instead of, like, somebody else. But we placed, I think, third at state. So I'm glad he got to go to state and look forward to it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Well, but. talk about your – so when, when you're preparing for these bigger tournaments, do you change anything as far as your preparation, or do you kind of stick with the same routine that you would for just a normal, you know, regular season matchup? No, I just stick to the same thing because if I change something, then I'm going to have to get used to doing that, and then it will throw the whole thing off. So I just do everything the same. I kind of want to know what is your routine because that's what you're talking about. Like I want to know how you warm up for those people that don't always – like we go to bowl but just for fun. So I want to know how you practice and prepare. Um. Well, it took a lot of practice to get to where I am now, but – I literally just – I have different balls I use, and I just try to find my spot on the lane, and then as soon as I find it, it's most of the time strikes. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that's like. I don't – if I bowl a strike, it's a miracle whenever I go bowling. But it's – so, you know, I think when, when, when you're out there bowling, do, are you talking to your coach and your teammates, or are you just laser-focused, knowing what you need to do? You know, and, and I, I, I can't remember the bowl. I think it was uh, – Alley cat strike or something like that. Whenever we were growing up, Coach, probably you were probably the same age I am, close to it. And it was a, a Disney Channel movie, and they had the seven ten split. Have you ever had that before? Have you ever had to, to try to split the seven ten? So how do you, can you do that? Is that something that you that you've practiced? Um, I can't hit a seven ten. Okay. Uh, I could probably hit a seven. Okay. But nothing else. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's a lot more difficult than. And I feel like if you're if you're out there and you've got the fans cheering you on, do, do y'all have a, lot, a pretty good crowd support whenever you're at your home games? Um, most of the time. Well, good. So, like, if I hit a strike or something, the, it goes crazy, and it's insane. <laughs> Do you watch bowling, like, on television? Because it's on all the time. Yeah. You yeah. know, I see it on the weekends. And so, do you follow anyone in particular? Um, well, I have a favorite bowler, but the way he bows is totally different than how I bow. But, yeah, so I can't copy him. No. Who, who, why? who is your favorite yeah, bowler? Why? Jason Belmonte. Okay. And why? And he's a two-hander, so I oh. – he don't put a thumb. He don't put his thumb in the ball. So yeah, it's different. Cause me, I put all three fingers in the ball and then just hook it. Okay. So you use different balls, you said. Um. Well, right now I use a storm, and that's what I'm okay. stuck with. And what what size? Like what poundage? Right. Do you use? Um. I think it's a fourteen. Fourteen. Wow. Okay. There you go, Smith. We're learning all kinds of we stuff. We are here. learning. I like. Well, uh, let's talk to Tyler and see what what I'm kind like of his routine is. I'm like whatever pops out of that machine. Yeah, I mean, most of the time I change right. it up, you know, because I mean, I get in a hurry too. Because most of the time when I go ball, I've got two screaming little kids running around too. <laughs> that I've got to chase down. That makes it a lot more difficult. Oh, you put your ball up on that thing and let it roll. Yeah, around, don't you? yeah, that's yeah, the best yeah, way yeah. to do it. That way I don't hit the gutter and I, I pull <laughs> the pins up too. But but Tyler, let's talk about you. Yes. So so what what is your routine like? What do you try to do to prepare yourself for a match? Well, I usually bowl. We typically had practices Mondays and Wednesdays throughout the season and I bowl in a Tuesday night league out at Galaxy Bowling. Okay, yeah. So typically bowling three to four times a week on average just like she was saying trying to find my spots on the lanes and different oil patterns will okay. be mess you up sometimes but it's all about adapting to that and how do you know if there's spot. a different oil pattern? You just got a bowl on it usually. And you're and like, that's not what normally out. happens. Yeah. So something's off today. And different bowling alleys, too, will yeah. have different oil patterns. Mm -hmm. And everywhere you go, it seems to be a little different. Do you have a favorite bowling alley that you like to play at? Well, uh, probably Galaxy Bowling right yeah. here just because I'm out there, like I was saying, three, four days a week. And it's, I like it out there. It's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, I like I, – I mean, Galaxy is a place, too, where you can – it's got more than just a bowling alley. So, I feel like the atmosphere over there is always fun with the arcades and you got champions and you got the bowling alley itself. The food is good. Yeah. Yeah, so, when, when, when you all are, are having a home match, what is, what, it, what is your routine? What do you do from the time you wake up to the time that you're out there getting ready to bowl? 
usually wake up, have a nice breakfast, and go to school. Most of our matches are usually on weekdays. Okay, yeah. On our Mondays or Wednesday practice days, we usually have matches. And go out there, we usually get a game or two to warm up before we play someone and have our big old 33-person 33 team, 33, 33 team out there and all support each other, have a great time. Try to win as much as we can. Good deal. So, you know, with other athletics, they weight train and strength train and endurance, different things. Do you guys do anything like that with bowling? I would say sort of. I Because I would say your one arm is bigger than the other arm, right, if you're right-handed? It, it I mean. might be. I used to bowl with a 12-pound ball at the start of the year, and now I have two of my own balls. One's a 14-pound ball, one's a 15-pound ball, so... I guess you could say that yeah. one arm's gotten a little stronger <laughs> bowling. Well, I think when, when, with what you all have done, it's pretty cool to see that you all have kind of taken this, this tradition that Madison Central has right now with winning – it's been a, a year and a half. It's just been championship after Between championship. Between cross country. Yeah, and, and uh, dance yeah. and cheer and yeah. basketball winning the region and b- baseball playing in the region championship and game. And football. I mean, yeah, football doing what they did. I mean, it was, it's been so much fun to watch all these different teams have the success that they've had. So for you all to do that, what's it like at school? Are you all getting, you know, do your classmates know what you all are doing too? Yeah, uh, they announced it the day we came back from school. They had it over the announcements that me and Morgan had won the region championship. So it was a bunch of fist bumps and high fives yeah. in the hallway. People telling us congratulations. is is nice to have a little support from the school just like all the other sports. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because, yeah. you know, people – who I was shocked when you said that there was 33 student athletes involved in bowling. Yeah. It makes me so happy to think that this sport is growing. So that's exciting. So what are you doing to recruit more of your friends to be involved? Oh, uh, well, I did start bowling. One of my friends, Joey, he actually works at Galaxy Bowling. We okay. just started bowling as something to do for fun. And then this is my first year at Central, and I heard we had a bowling team. So I – Decided to join it and try to get as many of my friends and people around the school to join as I could. Just have a great time out there. Well, Coach, let's talk about, you know, the, the upcoming Wednesday, week yeah. and what it's going to look like for you all and the trip down to Louisville. We said the state tournament's going to be held at Louisville. So talk about that and kind of what will be taking place with this tournament. Yeah, so we're leaving out early in the morning, uh, and then we'll bowl Wednesday. Um, we're going to try to go up tomorrow night and get a couple lanes just so that we can get familiarized with that, you know, the bowling alley. Yeah. Um, and we actually just left practice before we came over here uh, just to try to get some, you know, an idea of where we were at. Uh, and the last game that they bowled, they ended up bowling a 193. Uh, wow. for a Baker, so that's a pretty solid score. I was pulling all the scores from the other seven regions, um, and that would put us at least in that top four tier to uh, get that first round by at state. Now, it might not happen Wednesday, yeah. but, you know, we can always – that's what we're banking on type thing. Right. Uh, so that's what we're hoping for. Well, Coach, before we let you all go – Oh, we got to find out about the Baker. Yeah, He's talk about the Baker's yeah, yeah, yeah. the Baker style match and exactly what that was. That's how you all won the region championship. Yeah, so we bowled in a Baker style in the unified uh, tournament. It's where we'll ha- – it's uh, bowling in pairs and a double pair. Uh, and then we'll have one athlete will bowl the even numbers, and then one will bowl the odd numbers. Okay. Um, so, like, Morgan is responsible for the even numbers, so she'll bowl two, you know, all the way through ten, and then Tyler will bowl one through nine. Okay. Um, so they sort of just feed off each other. So when we bowled Southern in the semifinals uh, to advance, they uh, actually started out with six strikes in a row. Wow. And so they feed off of each other, you know. Um, you Momentum. Know, if we, yeah. So if we don't make a mark on one, you know, that means either a strike yeah. or spare. Um, you know, it sort of gets down, and you can tell that. So we try to keep them encouraged and stuff, and it's just pretty automatic once they get rolling. Well, so. if somebody wants to keep up with you all yeah. while you're down there at the state tournament, do you have a Twitter or a Facebook or somewhere that they can go to get more details as to what you all are doing and, and your sc- uh, scores? So I don't keep up with Twitter much or whatever. You know, I haven't made it big time yet. But um, <laughs> I'm going to stay in contact with um, – Nathan okay. at the register, and then I'll be communicating with you as yeah, well. Perfect. Uh, just to try to give you an idea, you know, how far we're advancing, you know, and if we make it to the finals, and of course, win as well. Yeah, so. let us know so we can let everybody out there know, and then we'll, we'll keep everybody out there updated on Facebook and Twitter ourselves. So yeah. we want people to see it. So yeah, definitely let us know, and we'll, yeah. uh, we'll get that out there to the masses. And superstitions, yeah. do you guys have any? You got any rituals you do before you ball? Banana peel on the sock or anything like that? No. <laughs> no. 
Well, good luck no. in the state tournament, and uh, yeah, be sure to let us know, and we'll let it, we'll keep everybody Absolutely. updated on we'll the sports and everything. Hopefully, we can bring a state championship back to Richmond. Oh, so that'd be great! What Central. day is the final? It's on Wednesday. So we'll bowl the whole thing. Oh, it's the whole thing is on Wednesday. Thing is on Wednesday. It'll be on okay. Wednesday. Yes. So. Well, good deal. Okay. Well, good luck to uh, Tyler and uh, and uh, Morgan. Morgan as well. I, I can't forget that. That's my wife's name, so I'll get in trouble if I forgot that name. So, <laughs> good luck to you all. Have fun and uh, compete well, and we'll look forward to keeping up with you all on Wednesday. All right. Thanks that for is the us. Region 8 champs, the Madison Central Bowling Team. Folks, we'll step aside for a short commercial break. we got more guests coming your way when we come back. We've got some middle school girl volleyball players who are ready for their conference tournament to get started. Right. We'll be right back on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. What does in transit mean? When you see that on our website at jackburford.com, it means your favorite Chevy is on the way. Call us at 859-623-3350 to reserve it and we'll keep you updated throughout the entire process see it's that easy reserve your new chevy today and jackburford.com your vehicle is now in transit And I'm Jennifer, and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Smollinger Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cubby Deck, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Locally family owned and operated, Bluegrass Restoration and Construction is a full service construction company offering full service home maintenance. Bluegrass Restoration specializes in wind, fire, and water damage and mold remediation with 24-7 emergency services. Bluegrass Restoration and Construction is here to serve you during any emergency. All their services are performed in-house with no subcontractors. No job is too big or small for Bluegrass Restoration and Construction. Give them a call at 859-353-1133. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service. A place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality. Great Great prices, great food, and the best margaritas and fajitas in town. Doesn't a huge 32-ounce ice-cold beer sound great? Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, Security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills. When you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-666-2990. Back here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show, Samantha Burford, Michael Watts. What a fun show today. Oh, we like, were jam-packed. I'm still talking to everybody. Yeah. Like, it's well, so listen, exciting. If there's one thing I've learned in doing this show with you for five or six years is that, listen, and I like to talk, but it's hard to we're get you talkers. to be quiet every now and then. I know, because I'm so excited. We have such great guests on our show. Well, we've got, let's see, Akila Smith, Aubrey Donald, Emily Steele, and Madison Day here with us, and we're going to talk to first – to the coach. new head coach yeah. of the Madison Central volleyball team, Janet Thacker. And Janet, welcome in and congratulations. And yes. so it, it's just pretty much 24 7, 365 volleyball with you, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, <laughs> it's crazy volleyball. Him. You have really taught him the world of volleyball. Well, listen, she kind of just sent me on my way this year. She's been so busy. You didn't she call me to help. You just went and well, did it. Here, so I know you're doing your own thing now. You were at well, Bourbon County, right? So you I, were at, I was at Bourbon, at Bourbon County. Bourbon yes. County. Now we're at Central. We we won't talk about that. So let's talk. Well, let's talk about this process first. You know, getting the position at Madison Central. I know that's something that you've really wanted for a while. So let's talk about that and kind of a dream come true kind of thing for you. Yeah, it was a five-year plan I had set in place. It just came a little earlier than I had anticipated, so I just jumped on it and well, ran good. with We're it. We're glad you did. Well, and I'm sure they're glad you did. You yeah. know all those athletes already. Yeah, my Bourbon County parents weren't too <laughs> pleased with it, but they understood. And yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's is what it is. So. Well, tell us about these girls you've got here with us. We know that the conference tournament now. I think it started actually today. It correct? did start today. Seventh grade is playing the first round, which um, my seventh grade team got the bye. We were undefeated. 
um, eighth grade will start tomorrow night. My eighth grade team got the bye. They were um, ten and one, eleven and one. Okay. So they're the number one seed. Um, so seventh grade started tonight. So Madison Middle seventh grade is playing tonight. Um, all the other teams will play tonight. And then we'll start up next week with the second round. Okay. And that will be at Garrett County. So now all these girls are eighth graders, correct? Yes, these okay. are all eighth graders. And Emily and Aubrey for, are from Cottle. Madison and Akia? Aquila are from Madison Middle. Okay, well, good deal. Well, let's uh, let's get let's get them on here. So first, we'll start with Emily. And so, uh, first question I want to ask you: Who's the better athlete, you or your brother? Um, after his game last Friday, uh, he had a good game Friday. He played really good. I was really proud yeah, of him. He scored some bad. Yeah, seven now. points. So. We're about mm -hmm. even now. So you're even now. Okay. Well, don't ever admit yeah. that. He ain't here. You can talk. You can say Girl, you're number say one. It's yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, well, you can say you're number one. So, well, let's talk about. Sounds so, like they definitely are keeping score at home, though. Oh yeah, I like that too. A little sibling <laughs> rivalry. So let's talk about you know what what you all are are doing right now with this conference tournament and, and how confident you all are going into this tournament. Um. Well, so one of the games, Ferris Town, we won against them and we lost against them. So we definitely have to be on our A game when we play them, or if we play them in this in the conference. But we have to keep on working and keep on working hard every practice and keep on pushing ourselves. The eighth grade has a – we have a lot of teams. Yeah, pass that there. The eighth grade has a lot of teams that are very equal. Okay. Uh, Ferris Town, Madison so competitive Middle, district or and us are yeah. really similar type of teams. So it's – the eighth grade is going to be a struggle to get through. It's okay. going to be a battle. I think we took you all three both times we played you all. Yeah. I think yeah. so. So yeah. nothing's going to be easy. <laughs> You and that all starts today, yeah, right? Yeah. You, you, yeah. Okay. So, so does seventh grade have a – are they all today, seventh? Just the, the first round. Just the first round. Yeah. So okay. seeds uh, two, seven, three, four, three, six, and then four and five play. Okay. So, Emily, when, when you all were competing during the regular season, was there a moment where you're like, okay, yeah, we're, we know we're good. We just got to go out there and prove it. Yeah, definitely during Madison Middle and Ferris Town, they were probably our hardest competition. We knew during those games we had to step it up. Sometimes we didn't, and it caused us to lose, but now we know that we have to step it up and play our hardest. With you all, you know, knowing these girls and playing against them a lot, did, did you all play a lot before you got into middle school too? It's kind of been like a, a rivalry kind of within within the, 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 the city here of Richmond? Uh, most of us started in sixth grade. I okay. and my friend Malia started in fifth grade, so we got a little bit of a head start. But I went to elementary with Madison, so okay. we kind of knew each other. I am starting a youth program. That's uh, it's gonna uh, start in June, July. I'm trying to get eight, nine, ten, and eleven year olds to okay. play volleyball before they walk into middle school. Yeah. All right, coach. You know what? Every coach that we talk to on our show talks about starting these student athletes earlier so that they can once they so that you don't have to train them as sixth graders yeah. that they already know the basics. So I think it's wonderful. Yeah, whenever you get those details worked out, make sure to let us know. Yeah, because we'll promote yeah. it and push it on the show is let people know about it. Well, let's keep the coddle trend going. We'll move yeah. over to Aubrey first before we get to Madison and Aquila. So, Aubrey, now you, we know you stay busy. So you do a lot of the club teams and everything yeah. else. But what's it been like during the regular season? What has been kind of your routine, and what have you been doing throughout this year? Well, I've actually had to miss um, a few games for my club practice because – Club is like very important when it comes to progressing, and yeah, and it costs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think that club is first, and games are very important, especially with right. the conference coming up. So I have been focusing on coddle a lot more lately, but I think it's just a lot to you have to juggle it all. Yeah. It's so scary. they run consecutively, I guess, together or one month. Club tryouts are in November. They'll okay. start practicing December, January, and middle school won't end until mid-February. Oh wow! Okay. okay, so yeah, they run pretty. So you know, we, we know you, you've you've been doing all these games. Uh, when is it is it different going from club to your middle school team, or do you yeah. play kind of the same positions in both? Well, um, as of right now, I play only back row and club and that's something I d usually didn't do because I've done club for this is my third year and I was a right side only which that was something different for me 
but I was a right side only and I wouldn't go back row but this year I started to focus on my back row and I think it's really progressed. So remind us all to teach us the back row what is the difference I mean we know you're in the back but obviously is that because you can hit it harder is it you got to be stronger in the back what's the difference? It's like a completely different type of game. <laughs> so back row players are um defensive specialist so they're okay. going to dig in, dig out the hits that yeah. are hit from the other team um they're usually shorter players lower to the ground and um can read what the hitter's doing if our front row doesn't get the block down so front row you're thinking blocking and hitting and back row you can hit from the back row but you're more of a defensive person to dig things up see i did not know that yeah. did you know that uh, I'm, listen, I'm still I, anything learning. janet knows i know okay she's passed all of her knowledge down to me <laughs> well we're so. learning it today especially <laughs> well, Aubrey, so what's it going to take for coddle to win another conference championship this year I think we really just need to acknowledge all of the teams that we have there you go. in <laughs> our conference and just know that we have to play our hardest because I feel like sometimes we get a little ahead of ourselves and we rush, but I think now we just have to focus and get together. Okay. <laughs> and I would say Madison and – I mean, they're over here going, no, 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 no we're – yeah, they need to acknowledge us because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're let's talk to Madison. Them. So, at Madison, so who's who's your all's coach at Madison? I know Kim was there for a little while. Is she, so, who's the coach now? Um, as of now, it is Alexandria Howard, which mm. she's new this year. Okay. But I think she's done pretty good as a coach being new because our team, we've lost a couple players recently, and um, but we, like, came back as a team. Okay. so That's important. How long have you been playing volleyball? Uh, this is my third year. Okay, so you've got some experience under your belt. And, you know, from Madison Middle, we know Coddle's been around, and they've kind of been that program that you've been trying to knock off for a while. Right. So what is it going to take dominant. for you all to do that and, and to try to come up with a conference championship? Um, I think that we, like, like they said, we can't get too ahead of ourselves because we did beat them in seventh grade. And so, um, like, I would say it's – it's like I think we're on a pretty equal playing field. Okay, yeah. So we just have to go out there and give it our all. We, we I think you guys are all pretty competitive. Yeah. I, and That's I like how good. nice and kind you guys are because I think you guys see the bigger picture that yeah. uh, it's pretty soon you guys are all going to be playing together. That was going to be my next question. You know, you, you're out there competing against yeah. each other right now, but next year yeah. you're all going to be playing together and she's going to be your coach. So talk about what that's going to be like. And, and right now you're focused on this tournament, but here soon you are going to be on the same team. Yeah, some of us play together um, through club. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's pretty similar, but I think it's I think it's going to be pretty fun knowing that like all of the talent is going to come together and create a really good team because I think we're all pretty good players. Yeah, okay. Right. But well, let's talk to Akila. And, yeah. And so what what position do you play? Well, I play hitter, but sometimes I play back row too. Okay. So so what does it take for you to be able to play your position? Um, it takes a lot of talking because everybody in the front row is like pretty aggressive and wanting the ball. So you really have to say mine, 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 and that you want it. Okay. Or you won't so communication it. is extremely important. I love it. Which position do you like the most? I like to hit a lot. I find it really fun to do. Okay. Now, do you, do, when, it, when you all played them earlier this year, uh, does that kind of give you some confidence that you, when you go into this tournament that you can compete with them and, and you can be one of the teams that could be left standing at the end of this tournament? Yes. So what is it going to take, like as she said, what is it going to take for you all to be able to pull this tournament out? It's going to take us, like, a lot of talking, a lot of motivation, us not giving up, and we just have to stick together if we want to make it through and win. Well, I think it's pretty important, as you mentioned, Madison, that you guys have got a new coach. It's, you learn new, different things. I think it's fantastic. Tell us about what you guys have to, had to overcome this season having that new coach. Having to overcome that is that, like, um, like not all of us like know what we're doing, and we're having to learn together. Our lo learn from club ball, or just learn together okay I guess as eighth graders would you guys say that you're the leaders of the team and you guys are yeah. the experienced ones helping the seventh graders or the sixth graders? have you played three years too or have you played longer than that? I played um four years I started in fifth grade okay 
Well, good deal. Well, uh, good luck, ladies, in this tournament. Coach, before we, before we let you all go, is there – I know uh, for the championship game, you know, we've been talking to Gary uh, about possibly being over there. You know, the championships and everything will be at Garrett County, right? So even if it's like you all versus Madison Middle, it'll still be held over at Garrett County. Yep. Uh, but is there anywhere that they can watch some of these first-round games in the semifinals, or is it just kind of hit or miss? I think some of the schools have some parents that have Facebook Live. Like yep. I've got a Facebook – page yep. for my coddle team and I have a dad that posts the games from there and I think you all have one as well so they have to kind of be, be friends with page. us yeah. to find that but um yeah all games the semifinal games on the 14th 15th are at coddle and then the championship games are on the 17th at so not County. at coddle at Garrett County yeah okay yeah. So the 17th would be what next Thursday, Thursday. okay oh, good deal. this okay. makes me extremely excited for the future of high school volleyball yeah uh, yeah, it's, these, it's exciting. Well, I mean, for you, too, I mean, to see all these you know, young players that you're going to have next year. And, and there's a lot of really y good young players that were at Central right. this past season. And taking the step to play in club because, yeah. like they were talking about, like Aubrey spoke of, you're going to get more out of a practice of 10 than you are of a practice of 30. Oh, yeah. yeah. And to bring that back to middle school, I'm going to take it every day. Yeah. Um, and in high school, there is no interference. Club does not interfere with high school in any way. So then they're bringing all of that back to high school as well. Well, ladies, good luck this week and next week as well. And we look forward to covering y'all. And hopefully we can get it worked out to where we can come down there and stream those championship games on the 17th. Janet, thank you for reaching yes, out to us, doing big things. And, yeah, we appreciate you coming over and looking forward to, to being Girls, right there with luck. you going into next year as well. Good luck, ladies. We look forward to seeing yes, you all next week. Thank you. All right, we'll take another commercial break. When we come back, the Berea Middle School Boys basketball teams had one of their best years Ever. We'll talk to their head coach, and we'll have a couple of their players join us here when we come back on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. What does in transit mean? When you see that on our website at jackburford.com, it means your favorite Chevy is on the way. Call us at 859-623-3350 to reserve it, and we'll keep you updated throughout the entire process. See, it's that easy. Reserve your new Chevy today at jackburford.com. Your vehicle is now in transit. As long as I'm breathing, I know I'm not dying. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer. And in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cub Cadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Locally family owned and operated, Bluegrass Restoration and Construction is a full service construction company offering full service home maintenance. Bluegrass Restoration specializes in wind, fire, and water water damage and mold remediation with 24 7 emergency services bluegrass restoration and construction is here to serve you during any emergency all their services are performed in-house with no subcontractors no job is too big or small for bluegrass restoration and construction give them a call at 859-353-1133 who makes the best meal in richmond nuevo vallarta friendly service a place that's good for kids and good for groups head to nuevo vallarta on big hill avenue in richmond Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best margaritas and fajitas in town. Doesn't a huge 32-ounce ice-cold beer sound great? Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-666-2990. Back on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Samantha Burford, Michael Watkins here with you. And we appreciate you joining us here on a Monday night. Samantha, it has been a fun show. We've had a lot of guests coming on. And 
We have got now the head coach, Mike Sloan, one of the players here from the uh, Berea Middle School Boys Basketball Team. Coach, what an incredible year for you guys. And you, know, you and I have talked the last couple of years, and we've, we were able to come over and do a football game for you last year. It's been hard to try to get basketball game on, but we want to give these kids the coverage that they deserve because you know your, your program over there at the middle school level has been on a huge incline in the last couple of years, and a big reason for that is the head coach. Let's talk about what you've been able to do with this program. To the kids, let's give it to them first. I, I've never been around a group of kids that wanted something so bad and was willing to work so hard. There, we'll go back doing open gyms at the end of March, and we'll run, we'll do them two, three times a week, all the way up to football season. And for the last two or three years, I've had basically the whole team there. Wow! At every one, so it's. They're committed then. Yeah, it's easy to build something when yeah. they're willing to work hard. Well, and that's pretty special considering all the pandemic and yeah. the flu and everything else that we've had. Yeah. <laughs> Strep. I mean, you name it. It's been around. Uh, they make me look good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, one thing I've always said about the fans over there at Berea, too, and I'm sure it's even the same way at the middle strong. school level. They love their school. Yeah. They love their sports teams. And we had the girls over here about three or four weeks ago, and I was like, if the Berea Lady Pirates were playing the Los Angeles Lakers, the Berea fans would expect the Lady Pirates to go out there and get a win. That's just how passionate those Berea fans are. And I think as a coach, you know, whether it's you or Coach Fields or Coach Step, you have to love that, that the fans are always going to have your back. Yeah. It's nice knowing you have the support of the community yeah. anytime we do uh, anything, no matter what level it is. Um, but it's also nice that we've actually been able to build the program to a point that the fans have something to be really yeah. proud of and want to come out and support. Well, let's talk about some of the accolades this year. 20-1. and one. I mean, that's impressive to start. Your season stats, you all average over 45 points a game. You only allow 28.19. You average over 22 rebounds a game. Your team passes the ball well. You only allowed 40 points three times all season, and only once did your opponent score 41 points or more. You held teams under 30 on defense 11 times. And I think this is the most impressive stat. Your scores against Madison County teams and, and the teams that are in that conference, you beat Garrett 44-37, you beat Cottle 43-21, Beat Estill County 49 to 30. Beat Cottle again 42 39. I mean, you're just rolling off wins here against Madison Middle 44 19. Garrett County 44 and 14. And not only are you all beating these teams, you're going out there and beating them by double digits in almost every game. So, as a coach, you got to love that seeing these kids, you know, from the little school over there in Berea, play against these bigger schools and have the success that you're having. Like I said, it's a testament to these kids. We. We were probably actually the smallest school in the county yeah. this year, yeah. size-wise. We started four guards and would just pressure people start to finish. So a lot of nights we didn't have to worry about if the offense was going to show up because we knew if we could just find a way to get to 30, yeah. we was going to be in good shape. But with everything that's happened in the past two years, last year we only got to play 11 games. So to come out this year and have the season we've had is – to me, has been refreshing. Yeah. Well, you give the credit to the kids, obviously. They do, and they put in the work. But it's obviously lots of practice. What are you doing different this year to make it worth the success you're getting? I've not really done anything different this year than the past 10, 11 years I've coached. It's just this all come together. Finally, we've had time to build the program up. Uh, it's the first year I've really had a group that I've been able to coach their sixth grade, their seventh grade, eighth yeah. grade year. And with KHSA's rules this year, I've had a couple of them come back for a th – Yeah, the extra year. Yeah, so we had a lot of experience coming in. We was the most unselfish team I've ever coached. And at the end of the day, nobody cared about personal accolades. All everybody wanted to do was win. I think that's a big deal, too. Whenever you see these kids at this level – a lot of times it can be hard for them to buy in because they're watching Steph Curry shoot yeah. half-court shots and make them with ease. They're watching LeBron, LeBron. make crazy passes and stuff <laughs> like that. They're they're watching James Harden kind of just throw his body up in the air and get a foul every time. So it can be hard for these kids to buy in. But they did that this year 
for you. Let's talk about some of them. You got Finley Blevins, eighth grader, uh, averaged over 10 points per game and, and, and over four rebounds, over three assists. Uh, Jack Hemingway, eighth grader, took the extra year after missing last season to a broke arm, averaged almost 10 points per game. Liam Brewer averaged over seven. Uh, Willie Reed averaged over five points per game. Uh, you got Maddox right here with us. He transferred from Rockcastle County. So you've, you've got some really good kids that have been a part of this program, and these are names that Berea fans are going to know for a long time because these kids are going to go up to high school. And right now watching this Berea high school team, man, they compete hard. They play hard, and they're young. I mean, Wilson's young. You've got a couple of sophomores and freshmen that are in the starting lineup that are going to be developing with the kids in that are the coming up from years, your team. Yeah. There's a bright future at Berea right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, I've said all year with the eighth grade team, we're 10 deep. And I would almost say that all 10 kids could go to any school in the county and would start. Yeah. And for them to swallow their pride and just want to be a part of the team and it's been an amazing ride this year. I wish it wasn't over. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about that and why it is over. So now you yeah. all don't compete in the conference no. and you've been trying to get in there for a while. Uh, let's just talk about that. I know it's got to be frustrating yeah, and for tell you. Tell people why that is. Yeah. Well, it's, so yeah, why, why has Berea never been in the conference yeah. to begin with? When everybody is, is Model in there too? Model's in there. Yeah. When I arrived at Berea, this is my fourth year at Berea. We was not part of it. Uh, my first year as head coach, I didn't really try to get in it because I just trying to get my feet under me. Don't rough any ruffle any feathers. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just try to get everything established. Second year, of course, was the COVID year, so there wasn't no point trying then. This year, I reached out. Uh, I reached out back in the spring about us joining, and I was under the impression throughout the spring and summer that we was going to be a part of it. And come August, I had teams start messaging me wanting to schedule games, and I reached out to the conference again, wanting to know when the conference schedule was coming out. And at that time, I was told that all the athletic directors of the member schools voted and we would be allowed to play any of the teams yeah. in the conference, but they was not going to include us in the conference this year. So we just decided at that point, okay, let's play them all. And yeah, beat them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you did. So yeah. so we'll see. Now, that conference tournament actually begins, I think, this week sometime. So we'll see who wins that and kind of compare scores. Now, you put out there on, on Facebook – Conference or uh, county champions, and I like that because you all have played all the teams in the county. In the middle school, you schools, beat all yeah. the teams in the county, so it's got to give you guys confidence that, and the right, I think the right to say, yeah, we're the county champs because you beat everybody else. I'll leave it at this: whoever cuts the nets down that tournament knows that we put a nail on them. Yeah, there you so. go. I like it. Well, let's talk to Maddox here too. So, so Maddox, you know, you coming coming into this program, what was it like playing for Coach Sloan this year? Uh, it was good. We had really good teamwork, and I knew a lot of people on the team from elementary school and stuff, so decided to come back and play with my friends another year. Have you got a favorite NBA player or a favorite college player that you like to, to watch, maybe kind of pattern your game after? Uh, Giannis, but I'm not really tall. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one that, like, I don't care who you are. If that's your favorite player, it's going to be kind of hard to play like him when you're, you know, seven Built feet, ten inches long or whatever. Yeah, so. Absolutely. But, yeah, so, but, but, but Giannis is the kind of player that gets his teammates involved, can take over games. So what, what made you kind of like him? Well, what drew him or drew you to him being your favorite player? Uh, he has really good teamwork, and he's a leader, and I try to be a leader, but sometimes I'm – not that good of a leader, but. Yeah. Oh, I don't believe that. Yeah, he's kind of he's he's yeah. quiet. Well, I'll tell you what, with he's, Giannis, he's too. He's humble. He's loyal. I mean, you look at what Giannis did. I mean, he could have left the Bucks and went anywhere, but he stuck it out there, won a championship. And obviously what you guys did this year at Berea was pretty special. What was it like going throughout this season and winning these games, not only winning them, but winning them in the fashion that you all did? Uh, it, was, it was nice to win a lot of games, but it was also fun because we had really good – we passed it a lot, and we had confidence in our teammates. Yeah, what makes this year – I mean, obviously you've had coach now for several years, so what makes it so unique and special? Why, how have you transformed this team to be so good? Um, I mean, we're all really good friends, and – we had good plays, too, from Coach. <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, that's in, that's special. That's important because yeah. if you have kids that when they leave practice, they all go their separate ways. But they're that, happy. 
Well, you know, I think whenever you all go your separate ways, it makes it harder to be a team. But whenever you yeah. all are hanging out outside of practice, oh, you're yeah. maybe sitting at the same lunch table together. Maybe you're all playing video games at night. I think it can kind of build a certain kind of chemistry that other teams don't really have. Relationships. Whenever, yeah, and I think the special thing at Berea, because I played at Jackson City. We're kind of like Berea. You know, Smaller. we're all coming up together. Whenever you're going to a Madison Middle and a Cottle and a Clark Moores, when you come over to Madison Central, the same thing over there in Berea with you know, Ferris Town and Foley and some of those other schools, whenever they go together, those kids are coming together for the first time in high school. These kids have been playing together, and they'll go right into high school playing together for you know maybe sometimes four, five, six, seven years at, at some time, depending on when they started. So I think that's a, a cool thing with these smaller schools too is these kids all come up together, and they kind of grow together, and it makes those programs a little uh, a special because of the way they do things. And have you seen that this year, seeing all these guys that you, you know, you're coming in to play with them this year? What Was that kind of what you saw, that everybody's friends off the court, and maybe that was why you all had so much success on the court? Yeah, there was a yeah I just noticed whenever I came here that there was a really good friend group and I had a friend coming in so he introduced me to everyone and then I just fit in so coach so what, what's next for Berea middle school basketball what is now that the season's over technically what is next for you all to do and, and take this next step forward well for these eighth graders most of them's playing freshman and JV right yeah. now so they're getting a head start on that for us it's just get back drawing board uh going to be hard to follow this season yeah. and next year we'll probably be rebuilding but we got some good pieces we can build on and just go out and try to get the most we can get out of each group each every year we're kind of at the mercy of our attendance so yeah some years we'll be up some years we'll be down I just want to try to make sure that every kid that plays for me one has fun and makes memories but two when they go on to high school they're ready from day one they don't have to catch up their first year well coach we appreciate yeah. you taking the time out of your day to come over and chat with us and i know that uh you've really enjoyed these boys and i've got to talk to you quite a bit and you got a good player in your son right. too would love to see him get back out there soon too but you can uh, tell the he's just very passionate about yeah. the sport and you, now, you can did you also go to tell Maria? that you where, you, where are you from i'm actually from right outside of pipeful I okay betsy lane okay them eastern kentucky guys yeah we mm. like it up there up in eky too <laughs> well coach i appreciate the time you guys have a great rest of your monday yes. night looking forward to keeping up with berea middle school boys basketball and congratulations and yeah exactly what thank a great you. year what a great year yes. for you guys thank you so enjoy it coach and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all next year all right thank y'all for having us so, like, one more commercial break we'll come back we'll talk some high school boys basketball samantha we are two weeks away from the district, district. tournament we'll look back at some of the games from last week and look ahead to where we're we're going to be at this week when we come back on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. What does in transit mean? When you see that on our website at jackburford.com, it means your favorite Chevy is on the way. Call us at 859-623-3350 to reserve it, and we'll keep you updated throughout the entire process. See, it's that easy. Reserve your new Chevy today at jackburford.com. Your vehicle is now in transit. I'm Michelle, and I'm Jennifer, and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Esco County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cub Cadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Locally family owned and operated, Bluegrass Restoration and Construction is a full service construction company offering full service home maintenance. Bluegrass Restoration specializes in wind, fire, and water damage and mold remediation. With 24-7 emergency services. Bluegrass Restoration and Construction is here to serve you during any emergency. All their services are performed in-house with no subcontractors. No job is too big or small for Bluegrass Restoration and Construction. Give them a call at 859-353-1133. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. 
Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best margaritas and fajitas in town. Doesn't a huge 32-ounce ice-cold beer sound great? Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-666-2990. We're back here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Samantha Burford and Michael Watkins here with you. Thank you for joining us here, folks, on a Monday night here at Jack Burford Chevrolet. It has been a fun show, Samantha. We have had so many awesome local athletes make their way over with bowling and volleyball and and middle school boys basketball. And it's been a fun, fun show tonight. We appreciate all those folks coming over. And And good luck to. Yeah, yeah, but good luck to the bowling team in the state tournament. Good luck to the Cottle and Middle and Madison Middle and all the teams in the conference tournament. You would think bowling would be over several days. That's what I assumed, that it would be like basketball or football, yeah. and it would be, you know. But, no, it's all in one day. Well, there's day, not so. as many teams competing in there as well. I mean, you look – I mean, I don't know. There, there, were, there weren't as many teams in that regional tournament right. that we would maybe right. see during seating. yeah during basketball mm-hmm. and everything else. So, uh, we do want to thank you to our great sponsors as well. Jack Burford Chevrolet, obviously, here on the bypass in Richmond. We're right across from Walmart, folks. If you're looking for a new vehicle, it's that time of year now. Those new Chevrolets are arriving daily here at Jack Burford Chevrolet. Visit them online at jackburford.com and see the latest inventory because I'll tell you what, these vehicles are so nice, they're coming in and they're going right yeah, back out. going out the door Yeah, right so, there. I mean, they are, they're, they're such good deals here at Jack Burford Chevrolet. And uh, you can come over and check out all the new and used vehicles here at Jack Burford Chevrolet on the bypass in Richmond. Also, Nuevo Vallarta, Samantha. That's uh, the best authentic Mexican food That's around, right. if you like. You make me hungry every week when we talk Well, you about got, this. got the queso, you got the margaritas, yeah. you got all the fun stuff <laughs> at, uh, at at Nuevo Vallarta right here on the Big Hill and Avenue in Richmond. And less wait time now that they've expanded Yeah, I mean, that place is grown. huge now. It is. And, and they're building one in Berea, I think, too. So they just keep growing over there at Nuevo. Keep growing this. Uh, Bishop Small Engine Repair, another one of our great sponsors as well. They're over here uh, on uh, North Estill Avenue in Richmond. And, you know, right now we're not really too worried about cutting the grass. We're more worried about saving the grass with all the cold that we've had. and That's all the. Right. But now's the time to get your equipment in there to get worked yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. If you, you know, maybe want to get your mower ready for spring, which is right around the corner. We're now moving towards springtime. They're doing countdowns that I hear really? them on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Countdowns so, so many days until yeah, spring. Yeah, get over to Bishop's on North Estill Avenue or visit them online as well. And the law office of Patrick. O'Neill. He's located in Breathitt County, but he serves all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. If you have a question about workers' compensation, criminal defense cases, uh, you know, a big thing around here, and especially up there in Eastern Kentucky, is, you know, Social Security and the SSI. Those benefits, folks, if you have questions about that, give Patrick O'Neill a call, 606-666-2990. Patrick would love to talk to you, get you in the office, maybe set up a time for you to come down there and get more information about all those things and to help you get the kind of of uh, care and the kind of uh, you know the legal Knowledge, advice yeah yes. that you that you need to have. He's so. got it. absolutely. Well, it was a busy week weekend for some of our coverage area teams. Obviously, with the threat of the weather that was right. coming in, there were some big games canceled. You know, we were going. Everybody to, was canceling. Yeah, our plan was to be at Madison Southern Model <laughs> Boys on Thursday. That game was canceled. Yes. Then on Friday, we planned on doing Berea Model Boys. That game was canceled. canceled. So the only games we got to do all week were Madison Central Boys. The Indians right. played three really good opponents in Henry Clay, Frederick Douglass, and then Perry County Central, the best RPI team in the 14th region, and beat all three of them. It took overtime to beat Henry Clay, but the Indians are starting to really play some good basketball right now. Yeah, it's incredible to watch them and the growth that they've had this season. I mean, they've lost a couple of players. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm telling you, the five of them that play. And what was impressive to me is that Eli Steele and Parker Mullins both are able to score. Yeah, we ten points over, combined on Friday. Yes, and yeah. we have heard heard over the several weeks that coach Feldhouse is telling Parker Mullins score they're not guarding you you got to shoot the ball you got to get out there and shoot it you're open yeah and he is listening and he's 
performing. He's doing it. And you can tell even as point guard, he's getting better every week. Central's won six straight games. They have won eight of the last nine. They're really playing good basketball yeah. right now and wins over some good teams. Boyle County, you beat Trinity, you beat Lincoln County, and all these teams are teams that are kind of rounding around that or ha- kind of hanging around that top 25 category. So very impressive stuff. A tough game tonight against Evangel Christian and a massive one tomorrow. Tonight's game's away. Yeah, but right? tomorrow's it's night. There. Tomorrow's night's tomorrow's away. Here. No, tomorrow night's away too. Ooh, okay. It's Lexington Catholic over there in Lexington, and that's number one right now. Madison Central is the top RPI team in the 11th region. Okay. Catholic is number two, and Catholic is 21 and four. Madison Central is 16 and seven. The Knights have not lost a game in region play, so that game tomorrow in Lexington is going to be huge, and our friends at Prep Spin will have that game for you tomorrow night if you can't make it over. So it should be a good one over there tomorrow night. Uh, and we should know by the end of the night or tomorrow night if Will Harden has got his 1,000th career point. He's 19 points watch. away. Yeah, 19 points away. He should probably get that tonight. He's averaging 19 points a game. If he gets yeah. his average tonight against Evangel Christian, he'll come back, come with his 1,000th point. Right. If not... Tomorrow. tomorrow night, yeah. There's no way he's not getting at least 19 in these two <laughs> in the games. Two games so. right. Yeah, we're on a hashtag we'll watch. Now, Madison Love Southern, it. the boys, uh, tough loss to a good Lincoln County team last week. And it's kind of been, again, one of those seasons, an up-and-down year for Austin Newton with a lot of players still Injuries. trying to figure out their their way their on role. this team. But mm-hmm. you know, they're a team that when they're hitting shots, they're very dangerous. And they're one of those teams that – on any given night, can beat some of these really good teams by in the 11th region. Yeah, They can beat some teams by a lot of points. So and then got, there's other nights that it just doesn't seem to roll. Yeah, like the, just the Lincoln County by 14. Yeah. They've went in their last few weeks, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. So in their last eight games, they're 4-4, four and four, and the Eagles tonight play Model at home before going to South Laurel tomorrow night. We'll be there on Thursday when they play Western Hills. It will be senior night, so we'll be there for that one. Is tonight's game the makeup game? Or is it, it is. So, so, so the model game, game versus Southern game. was supposed to be played on Thursday. Okay. It's at home tonight in the doubleheader. The girls right now playing Frankfurt. The boys will play model uh, later on And that uh, model tonight. boys game, that team is extremely young. Yeah. Model and Berea. experience compared to the Madison Southern team. Yeah, and model and Berea are both, you know, filled with young talent. They're, they've got some really good young players and some players that could be, you know, I, I think – good players in the future and they've got some freshmen and sophomores and juniors that haven't had a lot of experience so they're starting to see kind of those growing pains but you give these you know these coaches John Morgerson and Eric Fields some time to kind of develop these teams I think in the next year or two both those teams will be very competitive and you know could be getting some good wins throughout the year you know right now they're just struggling to kind of find their way right now especially in the 11th region when you're two of the smallest schools in the region it's hard to compete with those bigger 6A schools, and they're both seeing that right but now. But talking to Coach tonight about the Berea Boys Middle yeah, School, it team. makes you excited that, you know, the future is bright for them. So looking forward to the future of Berea Community Men's Basketball. Before we do go off here, we got a couple more minutes. I do want to update the Madison House situation over in Berea as we kind of shift quickly toward girls, yes, girls basketball. basketball. So Madison did tear her ACL. Yeah, so, we were talking about yeah, it. Yeah, so we talked about it last week. Uh, last uh, week. We, were, we thought that she was good. We were we hoping were, she yeah, was good. Yeah, hoping. But yeah, she did tear her ACL. And that's, listen, and Madison Howe is a player that we've seen kind of before our yeah. eyes just and get better and kind of come out of her shell and be a really good player for Berea. And uh, there are probably some schools that are going to be looking at her still. And I hope that she gets to go play college basketball somewhere because she too. deserves it. And she's, she's got the numbers. Yeah. She's yeah. got the thousand leadership. Point she's got the experience. Yeah. I mean, she is going to miss out on the district and region, yeah. possible state championships. Yeah. But she's played a season. Yeah. She, Three and, fourths of it. You know, I feel like. That I hope that doesn't kind of take the wind out of the sails for Berea because they're still a good team. You know, yes. Madison was a very important player for them, but they're, they're still deep, deep enough. They're deep. Yeah, yeah, they're still deep enough. They can kind of take a hit and still be able to, I think, win this district if they can, yeah. you know, get everybody playing the way that they should. Yeah, the problem but, is her leadership. Yeah, yeah. And She's a player the that on the floor. Her, her size and her skill set are hard to find. I mean, you're replacing yeah. – I mean, she's one of the tallest players in this yes. district. You know, so you you're know replacing – her calmness. Yeah, yeah, and in a situation when the game's on the line, having somebody to go to, that's going to yes, be a, a tough loss for Maria. She never gets rattled. 
We will have the district draw for you tomorrow. That uh, draw going to be at 2 o'clock. We'll be there to update you on that and let you know kind of uh, who's playing who. Again, this district does still draw, so will it be Berea Southern, Berea <laughs> Model, Berea Madison like Central? Draw. Who's playing who? Oh. That draw is tomorrow. We'll let you know who's playing who uh, later on tomorrow afternoon, Samantha. Oh, fun show tonight. We appreciate all of our great guests. Yes. Dawson Rule producing for us tonight. What Austin Hanks kind of helping him out. So, listen, this is one thing I've learned about Dawson. He's not been with us a ton. Not been with us very long. He can do it all. He can he can produce. He can jump on the show. He's he can gonna take my run job camera. And your job before yeah. too long. He can run camera and uh, you know he can be on the air with us as well. So right I appreciate now he's Dawson. Austin's so. job. <laughs> well, guys, We're you all, all. He's gonna be a one man band for too long. Have a safe Monday night. Stay healthy and uh, Impractical Jokers coming up next on WBON TV Channel Nine. We'll see you later on this week from all of us, folks. Have a great rest of your Monday on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs>